This year, one of the great estates of Ireland throws open its gates to the public and not just for the occasional afternoon visit. Castle Leslie in the tiny village of Glasslock in County Monaghan is taking in paying guests. Lucinda Lampton visits an ancient seat boldly facing modern times. Marching with the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic are the four miles of Domain Wall in County Moynihan that enclose the ancient estate of Castle Leslie. Two enchanting lodges invite one to the delights that are bound within. This is the home of the most remarkable of Anglo-Irish families, the Leslies. Since the Scots nonagenarian bishop, John Leslie, established himself here in 1665. Known as the Fighting Bishop, he many a time defeated Cromwellian troops, always with the stirring prayer, Lord, if we be sinners, they are not saints. Stand new to this day and let the arm of flesh decide it. He married aged 70 when he fathered nine children and was to die when he was a hundred years old. The bishop built a bridge, beautifully planted with yews, on a road that was laid right to the door of his castle. But in 1878, the bishop's house was demolished, yielding only to dynamite to make way for a fancier establishment for his descendant, Sir John Leslie. It was built as a summer retreat for guests from London, and he commissioned the fashionable Belfast architects, Lanyon and Lynn, to design this great Scots baronial pile. Sir John Leslie was a particularly picturesque mix. A great sportsman who won the grand military steeplechase the same year as his painting was hung in the Royal Academy. He was to live through five reigns, travelling in a stagecoach with Walter Scott in the 1820s, he was to also hear the sirens of the Great War. <laughs> This was designed by Sir John as a replica of Michelangelo's colonnade around Santa Maria degli Angeli in Rome. He bought the columns and the stones from the Forum as part of his collection from a grand tour of Italy, which were brought back freight free as ballast on the returning coal ships. It was not just Roman antiquities that Sir John relished. He also bought back Italian furniture and pictures, for which he built a long gallery. Today, this is a sad and sorry reminder of those times and awaits restoration. Few paintings still hang here, although one of Sir John's great-grandchildren, Desmond, Anita and Jack, does survive. Anita's face has been rendered a haunting white by an overzealous picture restorer. Jack still lives at Castle Leslie today and remains the one true link with the glorious past of the house. Tell me, do, of the heyday of the house. Well, its heyday was really the golden wedding of my great-grandparents, 1907, and they handed the place over to my grandparents. They wanted to live in London, and my grandparents took over here. Sir John collected a remarkable collection of pictures. Alas, the valuable ones, really valuable ones, have been sold. The Pontormo, the Tiepolo, the Bronzino of the Grand Duke Good of Tuscany, old, old. the Carlo Dolce. The Sebastian Ricci and uh, the Gainsborough, uh, alas, have been sold. And what is in this house today that he collected on that grand tour? The, the Della Robbia fireplace. You, you know about that? No, uh, I don't. Tell well, me. it's by Andrea Della Robbia. Good Lord. 
and uh, walking by Santa Maria Novella in Florence, he saw them taking it out of the church. It's not a fireplace at all. It's a surround for religious sculpture, and it's the oldest thing in the house. It dates from about 1490. Jack, I'd love you to tell me about your Uncle Norman. Oh, yes. Well, he was my father's second brother, uh, and he was in the Rifle Brigade. He was killed very early on, October 1914, at the Battle of Armentier, and uh, officers still took swords to the front then. Well, here actually is the sword, and um, it was lost for a long time, and then it was found by locals, and uh, sent to the war office. And as it has his initials there, NL, Norman Leslie, uh, the war office sent it back to the family. And so here it is. How uh, moving. It's, uh, yes. Although Norman died in France, his spirit returned to Ireland, as if saying goodbye to his family one last time in the depths of night. Well, this is the uh, bed where my mother and father were sleeping, and uh, she woke up in the middle of the night and saw Norman passing through the room and in a sort of luminous aureole. As he passed through the room here, he looked at my mother and smiled, and then he faded away. Oh, my goodness me. Castle Leslie was the first house in Ireland to have a bathroom with water pumped in from the lake, which according to Shane Leslie had the exciting property of becoming an aquarium when the animalculae were pumped in alive. This magnificent throne of a water closet is emblazoned with the Leslie motto, Grip Fast. This was acquired in 1057 by Bartholomew Leslie, the Chamberlain and supporter of Queen Margaret of Scotland. One day, whilst fleeing the enemy, the Queen was riding pillion on his saddle and she fell into a river. Grip Fast, the buckle, cried Leslie, and so her life was saved. <laughs> A secret tunnel rises up through the wardrobe in the porch room. It was built by Jack's brother Desmond and produced pranks galore in days of yore. One of the most desirable objects in all the house is to be found in a silken box on a great throne in the sitting room. And there is a stupendous surprise of the Duke of Wellington's charger Copenhagen's bridle which was worn through the entire day of the Battle of Waterloo. At the end of that day, in harness as it were, Copenhagen kicked the Duke full, square and fair in the behind after he had dismounted. Whoa, how wonderful. An Irish childhood does something to one's toes, causing invisible roots to go in the soil. So wrote Anita Leslie. Castle Leslie was our enchanted kingdom. You have had the merest tantalizing taste of the treasures that are to be found there, along with the rich and rare collection of characters that have poured through its doors. When the first Sir John built this house, he left his own artistic hand above the door, sculpting portraits of himself and his wife, Constance. And now, as the house steps onto a new and public stage, here they still are proudly proclaiming the survival of Castle Leslie. <laughs> 